hi guys welcome back to the channel today we'll be doing a maternity dress sewing tutorial i picked up this gorgeous burnt orange fabric and let's just get right into it so we'll definitely be needing our ruler rotary cutter scissors some tailor's chalk if you have and a tape measure mine is green but it's just as good we'll be also using a french curve so we'll be working on the skirt portion first so i'll start by measuring the length of the skirt and for this client she wanted it really really long so we're looking at about 60 to 75 inches for the train so once i get to that point i just make a mark with either a pin or i use my scissors to place a cut and for this tutorial you'll be ripping the fabric more than cutting it because this fabric is actually rip friendly so i first measured the front portion of the skirt and now i'm measuring the back portion so i just go ahead and snip this and then i'll be ripping it all the way across guys i can't tell you how much i love the sound of ripping fabric it's so soothing and it saves a lot of time as well so once i get to the end where it's a bit difficult to rip i just use my scissors to snip it and we're good to go so we're just gonna place this aside and then we'll move on to working on the bodice of the dress so step one would be basically measuring the width and the length of the top here you see me marking about eight inches for the back and then i'll be marking down for the length of about 15 inches inclusive of seam allowance step two would be to draft the front neckline so from the outer edge we are going to mark about five inches for the width of the shoulder and we're going to add our seam allowance then we're trying to ascertain how deep would like the neckline to be and for this customer she wanted it about 10 inches deep so we're going to place a diagonal line here because it is a v-neck and we're just going to use our ruler and draw a straight line from the point of the shoulder down to that 10 inch mark so i'm using blue tailor's chalk which may be a bit harder to see so next time i'll definitely be using white so step three is to work on the armhole and here we're going to mark about half an inch downwards and then we're going to slant this to the point of the shoulder again it is kind of hard to see but i'll make sure i use white tailor's chalk next time so we'll definitely be needing our French curve for the shoulder because it is so useful. So we're going to mark down about 8 inches and that's for the shoulder depth and about 6 inches for the chest depth. We're then going to connect these points and then curve it out at the end to create our armhole curve. So I usually do like a little rough draft and then I use my French curve to, you know, round it up for it to be true to measurements so you're going to use a french curve connected to all those points and then you're going to use your tailor's chalk to create that curve how smooth is that step four is to draw in the waist and side seams our waist is going to be about nine inches or nine and a half inches rather inclusive of seam allowance and we're just going to make the side seam by connecting the underarm point to the waistline. So I'm just going back over the markings that I made for them to be a bit clearer. And point to note guys, always double check your measurements when you're working just to see if it is actually what you intend for it to be. Because sometimes in pattern drafting, you can go a little off track so here you'll see me reinforcing my markings and double checking everything and when i say everything i mean every single thing because i mean we all want to get it right so next i'm going to grab my ruler and rotary cutter and we're going to go ahead and cut out this pattern guys <music>
be moving on to create our flounce for the sleeves and the flounce consists of a simple circle pattern and if you guys need more details on how to create for example circle skirts using this pattern you can leave a comment down below and i'll do a detailed video here you'll see me marking down about two inches which is the depth of my circle pattern and the trick to creating the most accurate circle pattern is to keep your tape measure as steady as possible so after marking that two inches down on all sides in the center all around we're going to use our tailor's chalk to mark that circle next from that line we're going down about eight inches and we're going to do the same thing keep our tape measure as steady as possible and make eight inch markings all around just imagine a circle or a quarter of a circle and you're just going to go and mark it and then we're going to attach all of these markings <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and cut out this circle pattern or flounce i'm using my rotary cutter here but you can easily use a scissors or an electric cutter to do so just ensure that you keep it as precise as possible guys so this is what it's looking like um, i have a few snags here which i'm going to use my scissors to just cut away So once you're done, you should have this donut shaped looking circle, which is actually a flounce, guys. So because we need two sleeves, I'm actually going to fold this flat on itself and we're going to cut it at the sides. look at that gorgeous flounce so now we're moving on to creating the pleats for our skirt and what i usually do is create some markings on my fabric equal measurements apart and then connect them as i said i'll be doing more in-depth tutorials on my channel as it relates to sewing so if you want to see that you can comment down now moving over to the sewing machine and here we have our pleats well secured with our pins and we're just going to place it under the machines and do a back stitch and then continue down removing the pins as we go along next we're going to go ahead and prep the skirt for the slit Ooh, this skirt has a high slit i would say it's about 16 inches from the waist she didn't want it too revealing because as i said it is a maternity dress and so we're trying to remain a bit conservative for this one i'm going to mark down the 16 inches as mentioned and place a pin we're now going to sew a straight stitch all the way down to this point and remember to backstitch at the beginning and the end. Next, we're going to open up the seam and on each side, we're going to create two folds and then we're going to stitch that down in place. We're going to continue the stitching all the way to the end of the skirt by folding and reinforcing our stitch. And that's how you'll create the high slits. Next, we're going to work on closing up the skirt and so we're going to place a straight stitch at the back to create the center back seam. Music 
as you saw we placed that pin at the back to indicate where the zipper will stop you'll just sew along past this marking all the way down to the bottom moving on to the top we're going to create some darts usually my front darts are about four inches long for the legs and about half inches wide and a pro tip for the sewing enthusiasts out there the iron is your best friend always iron as you go along as it ensures that your work is nice and neat next we're moving on to completing our bodice we're going to place it right sides together at the shoulders and place a straight stitch all the way down we're also going to do this at the neckline and the armhole curves to reduce the bulkiness of your garments it's always advised to trim down your seam allowance just a little i'd say about a quarter inch or so off to reduce the bulkiness as mentioned Because this is a v-neck we're going to take extra precautions when sewing the neckline here i place a, a pin for security as well as to indicate the center of the neckline so we're going to sew all the way down to this point and then we're going to pivot meaning place our needle in the fabric and turn it all the way around to the other side and then continue sewing We're then going to place some snips in the neckline so it will be easy to turn over. I usually place about three or so snips. Uh, you can create more if you like but this is the bare minimum. We're then going to flip our garment over and give it a nice top stitch. So we're doing this all around the neckline and the armholes. So to close up the armholes, we'll be employing the sandwich method as I call it. This is where you're going to place the armholes together, basically encasing the body onto itself. You'll ensure to line up the seams of the armhole and place a pin for security. You'll then go along all the way down to the end of the armhole, as I said, encasing the bodice inside. You're then going to place a straight stitch along this seam. It's kind of tricky, but you'll get the hang of it once you try. And finally, after all this sewing, we're going to take our garments over to the serger machine and we're going to serge all our edges. Next, we're going to bring out our hemming foot, which we are going to use to hem the curve of the flounce that we created earlier. I find that the hemming foot works wonders when working with shapes such as circles where it's kind of hard to actually create a fold hem. 
so this creates the fold hem for you but it actually holds the fabric if you see it has a groove where you have to place the fabric and then it will create the turn for you and stitch it in place Moving on to the back of the skirt, we're going to place the zipper on one side and stitch it down and then we're going to close up the zipper, place it on the other side and do the same. As I said, if you want an in-depth tutorial of how to insert a zipper, I can do so. Just simply leave a comment down below guys. Lastly, we're moving back over to the flounce and as you'll see the edges are super nice and we're going to create a little binding for the top of the flounce as it will be on the outside of the dress. So I'm measuring down about 6 inches which is where I'll be placing the flounce at the armhole curve and I'm just placing a pin to remind me of that point. I place it on either sides and then I'm going to place the flounce and just stitch it down. So the dress is basically complete. I'm just going over it to snip away any loose threads and here is the big reveal.